Uh, we kept the topic to, uh, we named the topic to be Holy Grail of unit economics and scale. Uh, it is truly a Holy Grail for, uh, for businesses that are you know, trying to build something enduring and sustainable. Uh, so without further ado, I will just, so what I'll do is I'll, uh, well, let's have a freewheeling uh, sure. session. I will ask some questions. Yeah. Feel free to jump in. Uh, and answer. Uh, we'll see if we can have like specific questions for the each of you. Uh, but if not, uh, consider it. You know, for all of you. Like I said, all of three of you have have been in the market as entrepreneurs for a while. You're not newbies, uh, so I'm sure you'll find some context in your respective business vis-a-vis -vis all the questions. And then I'll keep picking some threads from the Q and A as well. Um, so if you allow me, look, I, I want to just start with. Maybe let, let's get to the root of it, right? Uh, I'll give you this a quick number, uh, a statistic that uh, I used yesterday in one of the panels. Uh, Zoom, the platform we are using today, uh, was 30 billion market cap just before COVID hit in March of 2020. Mm. And it peaked at 180 billion. Mm. Today it's 29 or 30 billion again. Mm. Maybe it's a good sign that the pandemic is over. You know, and and Zoom saw what it saw in those two years, but look, the pandemic has it, it has been uh, a game changer for a lot of businesses. Yeah, and I know personally uh, this that all three of you have, you know, you've had to pivot or make some changes or maybe yeah. adjust your velocity of how you're building your businesses and so on. So maybe I, I'll just start with this. Can the three of you, uh, maybe we'll start with Angad followed by Anshu, followed by Mohit. Like what have been your guiding philosophies during the last two years as you were navigating um, through COVID? Sure. I'm going to start with that. Sure. Uh, so Manish, uh, so, you know, like you said, these have been unprecedented times. Uh, very, very, uh, we haven't, you know, we, nobody expected that COVID would hit us and hit us so hard. Uh, and, and, you know, during that journey, when it hit us, it was like really uh, all of us were stunned uh, for, for, our, for us. In fact, it was more like a demand side tailwind, uh, but uh, a fulfillment side nightmare to manage. Uh, and uh, so, so, so these were really, really in unprecedented times. The guiding principles for us, Manish, were largely, uh, you know, where, uh, you know, where, where the variability is so high, uh, we, you know, regrouped as, 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 as a team and said, you know, let's, let's index ourselves on two, two aspects. Uh, one is agility, uh, because we don't know how, how, uh, how the extern, ex externalities are going to pan out. So let's be super agile, uh, you know, uh, time frames. let's, uh, you know, reduce our time horizons, uh, as we are planning, uh, and be more tactical, uh, less of strategic because we don't know how, how the macros are going to play out. So our, uh, so directionally, we actually went the opposite side, you know, uh, be more and more tactical and just play it by the day, by the week. Uh, and at the same time, uh, 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 emotionally, it, it, it hit us, uh, you know, very, very hard uh, inside the team to our community leaders who are our partners and consumers. Uh, and whatever we did, uh, which is the second guiding principle was for us was, you know, to be as empathetic as possible, uh, empathetic. Uh, to our consumers, to our community leaders, and 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 and, and team, uh, and we did sort of multiple uh, actions initiatives around these two uh, guiding principles, uh, which is to be more agile and we have more empathy uh, in in how we are building stuff out. Interesting, very interesting. Um, and I know you you've seen you've seen actually quite a bit of tailwinds on the demand side, as you said. Yet it's you know I want founders to take away that. Tailwinds does, doesn't necessarily mean it's it's all good stuff. Uh, it still creates uh, challenges, especially when you have you know a, uh, a a crisis of this nature that is affecting people, their families, and and so on. Are you any thoughts? Yeah, yeah, Manish, thank you so much for having me. Uh, and Rajan's piece was also very interesting. So let me uh, start by saying that uh, you know leave aside the the COVID and the human side of it, but Cycles come consistently, right? We've all been around. We've seen these come and go. It's a great time to build the business. Otherwise, the distractions are too many. I still feel there is enough and more of fluff. It should go away even more such that we can build in peace. Um, now, the only 
peace is that uh, you should have the capital to be able to do that in peace. Uh, this time around, I would say we are fortunate. Last time around, we were not. <laughs> really, like, was in a very meaningful way because um, our business is about uh, discovery of offline retail. If people are not going out, there's no discovery happening, right? Like, it, and you were, you were there, right? You've seen us through all of it. And uh, we are thankful to the wisdom of, of yourself and our board that we've been able to see the long term. And the guiding principle for us, the question you asked, even at that point, was that, is this service required in the long term or not, right? And if the answer to that is yes, then, then we are on our mission, right? Then we need to just, as Angus was also saying, right? Like be tactical, find a way to get through this because it's not that it's gonna go away, right? We need to then just keep building towards that. And that's what we did. Uh, one very strategic thing that we did is we realized that, so our business is about driving business to local retail. And we were doing that by sending people to those stores. Then COVID came in, people are not going out. So we, on the same month, I remember end of March, right? We said, we'll start home delivery. And it was very contentious. I remember you saying, why are you doing that, right? And now I would say, and last board meeting- I'm, I'm guilty. My crystal <laughs> ball is not clear. No, 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 not at all, right? We were, it's also a matter of what else do we do? <laughs> So if our merchants want it, our users want it, we should start doing it, right? And the team kicked into survival mode to say, makes sense. And we had been discussing it, but dragging our feet on it. None of us wanted to get into logistics to the extent we can stay away from it. But once we started to do that, it built a natural hedge. And the second COVID wave came, we were far more robust. The third came in, we were even more robust, right? So now we've got two engines that are running, right? Taking people to stores and then getting stuff from stores to people. And our long-term mission to say that India is a country where local retail has been there for generations, right? These stores are not going to roll over and die as online commerce vertically integrated comes in. They will service our society. And to that extent, we are there to be the, that platform that connects these users to these merchants, right? So if that remains true, then we need to up our game continuously such that there is an effective marketplace that's keep that's getting built. So I would say that that had been the guiding principle. Um, people reacted very positively to say, okay, we are here, we'll see things through. Um, again, we are going into a cycle, but I would say like cycles are good. Like I, I look at this as an opportunity. Of course, our um, business also gets impacted, but thankfully this time it's not a, uh, a consumer cycle it's a financial cycle right so it's okay it's good that that's that very well said the last time around it was a consumer cycle and you had to go back to the root of the value proposition this is this is a this is going to be a cycle of a different nature very well said very interesting and, and you are i think your balance sheet wise you're you're okay for now <laughs> for now mohit uh, you, uh, I think for people who don't know, of course, Chalo is uh, um, uh, also one of those businesses that saw the hardest uh, uh, of, of COVID just because it's a mobility business. If people are in homes <laughs> under lockdowns, they don't take a bus, they don't travel, they don't just do travel at all. Um, yet you uh, have built a, I mean, if I can be fair uh, and remove my biases, you've built a two, three, four X better business through COVID. Uh, so clearly you had some guiding philosophies uh, that's, that, that have worked for you. Uh, would you mind sharing? Yeah. No, Manish, thank you so much. Thank you for having us actually here. And uh, it's a great topic that you picked up, you know, to be honest. I always believe that it's one thing to start up and then to scale up. But when you don't do that, you literally screw up, you know, and you don't want to be in that club at all. Uh, so, but yeah, coming back to, you know, the guiding philosophies for COVID time, I think first of all, as Ansu said, it's rare that you build a large business without hitting a wall at least once, right? We have hit a couple of times as well, but you at least hit it once. And what helped us most actually was our experience of facing the crisis in 2008, you know, Carvali days, actually. I still remember one of the slides in Sequoia presentation, which was viral around that time, was that the light at the end of the tunnel was not a ray of hope, but it's a train coming at you, you know. So we look, we look at everything, you know, very, very differently. Uh, there are three things I could summarize, actually. The first one was, you know, we told ourselves that no matter what, we will survive this, whatever it takes. And uh, everybody is still a lot more optimistic about it. You know, buses came to a halt. 
literally zero, there's nothing. But we knew that it's a category which has no alternative. Cost of traveling in a bus is so cheap that there's absolutely no alternative. You can't go and buy a second-hand car and a two-wheeler if you don't take bus. The, so that was the first thing that, you know, let's just stay on and it will come back. I think the second thing is uh, we knew that we'll have to cut once and deep. We do not want to go back to the team and make adjustments and cuts every now and then, right? You make an adjustment in March and then go into it in April, hoping the COVID will end in May and then it doesn't end and you do one more. We did not do any of it, right? Whatever I did in March, it stayed on until the COVID got over. So nobody has to go through that pain again and again, actually. You know, that's, March of 2020, to be clear. for our That's audience. right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. March, something like 15th of March or so, right? Uh, so do it once and do it well, you know, so that no one has to go through this pain again and again, right? That was the second one. I think the third thing was that it's just so important not to let a opportunity go waste. Right? Let it go crisis waste, actually, right? So we said, you know, what do we get out of this fundamentally? And what can change our industry and business in a more fundamental manner? For example, we automated 70% of all our on-ground operations. As a result today, we run maybe three or four times more buses with one third of the people on the ground. That's just like a fundamental change to the business, right? You get a 10x, 12x leverage on it. Another example and, and, would be, and it was always a priority if I'm hearing you right, but you know, you get in the scheme yeah. of the business, you don't prioritize it. Yeah, right? you're a whirlwind every day. You'd never do it, right? You do it for a customer, you do it for your operators, you don't do it for your own team. You know, that teams take the backseat every day, but you had a five months of good lockdown. You can sit at home and really know how I should have built this business fundamentally. And you go and build that actually, right? So that was great. Uh, another example I would give is that, you know, we figured that 90% of the infection risk in catching a virus inside the bus lies in interaction between conductor and the passenger if they're buying a ticket and exchanging cash. So if that's the highest risk, we could educate everybody around it and said how a cello card or a cello app will make it easier and safer to take a bus and why a bus would be a safer. So we were literally riding the web, telling everybody to run a safer bus. And that made us literally like it look like a leader in that category, you know, at that point of time. So these are, you know, very broad two, three things I would say, uh, very, very us, yeah. all three of you look you faced uh, there are actually three very different businesses um and shoes uh and 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 his team are cracking offline retail making it better for consumers Angad is just almost creating a, a new habit uh in assisted commerce um and doing and building micro entrepreneurship along the way especially where consumer behavior is different in you know tier one plus towns and Mohit, I think I used to say you were in uh, uh, the Bhopas, Indoors, and the Mysores, but it looks like you've also captured Mumbai recently. So you're just all over India now, uh, solving a very basic uh, mass commute, commuter problem. Uh, so you've seen your, all these, you know, the challenges have been very different for you, and, and that's very clear. And it makes sense you've had your own guiding philosophies around this. I, I want to bring all of us back to the, the core topic of the panel right unit economics at scale and i know this is something i'm sure you've discussed you discuss is uh, internally a lot boards also have a way of uh, focusing on it more at certain times than others uh, but uh, at least one of my learnings as well as a i guess a conundrum has been sometimes when unit economics works at a smaller scale it's not always true that it'll also work at scale scale uh, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, how do you look at, I mean, are there inflection points where the small unit economics also works on big unit economics or works at scale? Um, and I don't know how to like, uh, I'm sure I could uh, fra frame the question a little better, but how, how could you, like, were there moments in your own company building journeys where you felt like unit economics works, but it also works at scale? Uh, just throw some light on that and the yeah. hope here is that yeah. founders here can money, make some money is that reminds me of a joke you know uh, if i don't know if you remember coming out of 2000 bubble was people used to say we lose a little money on every customer but we make it up on volume you know that's that's rubbish right you lose money on every customer but you make it on a volume you know uh, and that's this i think went out a few times, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway i mean uh, if you want someone to go Otherwise, Mohit, otherwise, Mohit, why, Mohit, why don't you start uh, this time? And uh, I think Angad was uh, maybe after uh, Angad will go after you. Yeah, so this joke actually then it went out of fashion for a long time, I guess. But it's back again in the last few years. 
And also, I think this is particularly common in a startup that don't pass that Peter, Th Peter Thiel monopoly test, right? Uh, and the, these, these companies will spend a lot of money, rather every available dollar on acquiring a user. And if you raise prices and you go try and fix your unit economics, the customer defect to a similar service, right? And therefore, uh, that's, I think my opinion is that, and maybe I'm a little uh, uh, last decade entrepreneur, that most great companies historically will have good unit economics soon after they begin monetizing. Even if the company as a whole lose money for a long period of time, that's acceptable, you know? And I think investors have always been willing to invest in money losing companies that it can that may eventually make a lot of money. But, and also, you know, the founders who have raised a lot of money are at particular risk. And I see this so often, actually, you know, it's so tempting to paper on over a problem with the business by spending more money instead of fixing the product or the service. Right? And I've been a victim of that as well. Similarly, if you ask me, um, so, okay, so coming back to, you know, the, the topic, it's always important to fix unit economics. And as a founder, I think I stay very, very aware and everybody should be there's, unless there's no other way to operate in your business, then it's a very, very bad business. So the business has to make money. I think irrespective because the unit economic has to be there. You may say, you know, I will make a lot more money. For example, in my case, I will look at a bus and say, if I had a bus, I would not lose money beyond two months or three months, right? As, in, as soon as I optimize the bus and I start monetizing it, I should be making money. Or an operating label. Otherwise, you know, it's a fundamental bad business. Then there's no so literally for you, the unit, for you, the core unit has been the bus that you want to make money on every bus that Chalo is operating. Yeah, you know, this is interesting because what you define as a unit is very, very interesting. And uh, for example, we spend a lot of time to look at the denominator, you know, what, what really makes the sense. It could have been for us a customer, it could have been a ride at a route or a bus or a city, it could have been any of those things. And again, you know, whether you define a CAC or a contribution margin, you got to look at the denominator and say, what I really want to solve for. And in our case, it's a bus. And I will tell you later maybe why bus, but it makes a fundamental difference on how you drive the business. So. Personally, my so opinion. Your, your point is if the unit is defined right for your particular business, then uh, scale unit economics comes automatically. If the unit is defined properly, denominator is defined properly. Yeah. That's right, and I think it's very fundamental. Say you want to you want to build a product, you know, or a business which people are spontaneously liking to recommend, right, to others. That's one, and also you want to make it easy to understand business, right? And I think then the unit economics possibly solve for itself. Otherwise, you know, uh, as you get Bigger, it gets worse and not better, actually. So, yeah, you know, yeah. so interesting. Yeah, so I would, uh, you know, uh, sort of, sort of, we've seen uh, uh, last uh, almost 24 months, we are doubling our business every 75 days. Uh, so, so we're really, really seeing fast growth. Uh, the biggest learning, uh, Manish, for me has been that uh, scale is really, really deceptive. Uh, the, the question. Sorry, say uh, that again. Scale is really. So benefits that you get out of scale uh, can be super deceptive. Deceptive, okay. Yeah. Uh, the bigger question that we ask ourselves is that are we scaling the problem or we are scaling the solution uh, at at every at every unit level? Uh, and the devil here is in the detail, uh, I believe. Where what do you see in in your P and L, uh, CM one, CM two, or your you know profits? is an outcome of multiple operating metrics in your business. And that's different for different, different businesses. Uh, and some, some of the operating metrics uh, need to be solved at a, at a unit level, at a smaller level. And then there are certain other uh, numbers or metrics that only uh, sort of make sense at scale. For example, uh, you can't solve uh, customer experience at scale. Uh, you need to solve it at, at, at a unit level. Uh, for cross margins in our category, uh, that uh, that sort of comes comes with scale. So so we have to be like really really uh, detail oriented to understand uh, which uh, are are you sort of scaling the problem or you're scaling the solution. So uh, and that's sort of the framework that we take. Very. Good. Anshu, yeah, Finish. Um, so. Uh, I think let me first just build on the same uh, line of thinking around how do we think of economics in our business. Um, it's uh, uh, we think of economics, and this is also after some learning at a locality level. We know we are a marketing platform eventually, and if we get local scale on users, then we'll have supply scale, and then we'll have more demand, and then we'll have more supply. Right, so it just gets built around that. The um, and 
it, and as a result of it, we look at our business as aggregation of some 5,000 small neighborhood, two kilometer radius neighborhoods across the country. And what we say is that as the density on these neighborhoods keep going up, we'll make more and more margin. And the thrust though at all times, um, thus at all times is that we increase the density and we keep making sure that our pricing is such that it keeps making more money as we keep getting denser. I think over the years we've fine tuned this model, it works well. I, now let me go to what I thought you asked. I thought you asked me that it goes in the small, then it scales, right? That's a very different point. Because, and it, it hits you again and again, because, you know, it's when it's small, the complexity is lower and you can get the whole thing to work. The challenge comes in, we are all here to drive growth. Economics is a hygiene, right? I, that's what it is. There's no point in building a high, like, margin business, which is small. That's not the purpose of the, the capital that we pay. We need to grow. Right. So now how do we take these risks such that we, we grow the, whatever that unit is, right. Um, but we continue to have, um, the economics of that work. And now we've tried multiple things. I'll tell you what we've tried more recently. And it, this is a moving target. It, like there's no one perfect answer that keeps working for a long time. I, I gave you this framework of locality. It works beautifully. Now, um, we need to acquire more and more users. Acquiring more and more users in a dense locality is still straightforward. But if, if I want to make a lot of localities dense in a short period, that's really tough because my cat just shoots through the roof. Now, we know some methods like referral or we can give, you know, first user 90% off and stuff like that. Those work. Those work like a charm. But I would go to what Angad is saying, that, that charm is deceptive. You don't know, like it's our country. You put five rupees on the table, someone will come and find a way to take it. Right. So how do you make sure that you're not being taken for a ride as you run all of these experiments? And these are long lead time. We'll look at cohort, but cohorts are going to take time to start to show what are the lead indicators. So it's a constant, constant iterative process. And that is the role. That's what we've signed up for, right? To say we will manage growth and, and, and we'll manage growth without losing a grip on the economics. And I think while the frame is there, it continues to be something that we, we look to iterate and get better on as we grow. Very interesting. And, and as I look back at the journey of Magic Pin, I can almost like it's flashing in my head three or four moments where this question has come up and you all as a team have been quite steadfast on this uh, high frequency iterativeness, right? And then belief in this data and not getting, I think just trying to shed the biases, if I could say that in another way. Interesting. Um, I was expecting the three of you with all your experience uh, and diversity of businesses, it, quite a few interesting nuggets. Uh, you know, I wanna pick uh, maybe something more tactical, like thinking about the same problem, you're scaling the business, you're growing, uh, and uh, you're still keeping an eye on unit economics. So tactically speaking, it could be strategy, it could be ops, it could be cash on the balance sheet or how much you spend, how much you make, I don't know. And then there is the most important element, people, right? If you think, and there could be others, but let's just say these four, right? Strategy, um, and Anshu, you've been a consultant before, so I'm sure if you get down to solving uh, problems strategically, I know you come up with very brilliant and smart answers. Uh, so strategy, people, cash, op operations, what takes, and this is where the, I know three of you are not just co-founders, you're also CEOs of your respective businesses. So when you put your CEO hat, which one of these, uh, as you've been growing your business, which one of these is, has been the easiest to handle, but which one of these is also like take, has taken a lot of your mind share and has been a challenge, uh, if you miss. Sorry for the long question. Um, happy to repeat it if, if you want. Yeah. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll go first. Uh, uh, so, so when I, when I look back at uh, City Mall's journey and you know my own journey as uh, sort of the captain of the ship, uh, so different aspects of uh, the four that you mentioned have have taken uh, the driver seat at different points. Uh, like when we had just started out, uh, uh, honestly, I wasn't thinking strategy. Uh, I, I was just thinking sort of. 
uh, operations and how how to sort of uh, you know uh, get get the cash in and you know survival was 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 like the most important uh, uh, objective function for me. Uh, and as we sort of uh, moved further in our journeys, you know, everyone used to say that hiring is super difficult. Uh, and 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 when you just start, uh, and when you just start, uh, you don't realize how difficult hiring is. Like, hire to ho jate But uh, as as we have scaled, I've realized that it is uh, oftentimes the mo the rate limiting step in 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 your in your business uh, on how how well you can hire, how quickly you can hire, and you know, bring all the agility there. Uh, so for me personally, it's been uh, different aspects have taken uh, the driver's seat at at different points. Uh, something that uh, uh, that that sort of has been uh, relatively easier. I won't say easiest, but uh, relatively easier uh, has has been uh, operations and uh, also uh, strategy. And I would sort of break strategy into into. Uh, you know, very actionable elements. Angad, come on. I thought you would say cash. You've been raising cash at amazing <laughs> velocity. You've been setting records. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm just joking. Yeah. So, so you know, strategy, uh, it, it was like, you know, uh, what what is the direction and pace at which you want to run, run in which and at which you want to run your company. In? Uh, and I, I sort of kept strategies super simple there. Uh, so that, that's been easiest. Uh, uh, something that's been uh, relatively difficult has been, uh, you know, cash fundraising. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, give, given the macros, I think it, it worked in my in, in my in our in our favor last year. So that's that's broadly uh, how it was for us. Yeah. One of the messages Rajan had uh, was, uh, uh, if you raise cash, just uh, you know, keep keep it keep it handy and uh, um, you know, keep it dear to you. Uh, and I said, I've heard a term recently called husband your cash. Uh, so yeah, husband or wife your cash, um, hold it dearly. Very interesting. Um, who wants to go next? Uh, uh, I'm sure both of you have opinions on this as well, Anshu and uh, Mohit. Uh, I, I, can, I can go next. Uh, um, yeah, I would agree with Angad that, you know, it, it keeps changing. Um, but I would say in general order, um, like you don't revisit strategy every day, Manish, right? Like you think through it, then it's done, right? You don't need to keep coming back to it. Otherwise, there are more fundamental issues. So that part gets taken care of. And and cash, I would say, is just operating discipline to that extent, right? Like, you know, once you've got a strategy, you've got cash burn as part of that plan to say, okay, this is the direction we go, go towards. I'd just say thus that the, the org design and the capabilities that we are building as a result of that org design, right? I think that is is core and i would say we've we've oftentimes been too aggressive in the number of things that we can do right just out of ambition and you can you know when you're thinking strategy you can think everything and you get down to doing it you realize that you'll thin yourself out we can't do everything well so that 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 piece of saying this is how the org will get built over a period and hiring matters there right and we we'll keep getting better at what we are doing um some Pieces can be left to autopilot, but if you leave things for autopilot for a long, they degrade also. So just making sure that the right um, capabilities are being built to make sure that the strategy can be delivered. I think that's an important part. Now, this is too abstract still, right? I'll tell you what I really like when it comes to nuts and bolts, I think about the three parts to our business. There is demand generation, which is the brand awareness, recall, trial. There's the second part is supply. We need all local retailers to be on the platform. And the third part is experience. That needs to be a good experience every time someone tries it. This, uh, this third part, experience, or consumer centricity, if you were to call it that, right? This is what I worry most about. Because very easy to say, really hard to do, uh, over and over, like just getting everyone to realize. And we are a B2C brand, right? We can use our product. Um, so people can have a point of view. They should have a point of view across ranks and files, right? Business owners, ops, right? How does everyone think like the consumer? It's, I would say that, that to me remains the, the most important piece that we are, we are yet to overcome in a way that I look at the experience and I feel every time that, okay, we've, we've delivered, we've like dotted all the I's, crossed the T's. Right? I think that, that I would say is the most important piece. Finally, when it comes down to what I worry about that we need to get better. Uh, actually, Mohit, go ahead. I, I will pick up a uh, question from the audience after Mohit. We hear Mohit's response in this. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I try to keep it very simple, Manish. Uh, 
strategy is something very very fundamental and ansu also said the same thing you don't do it every day so one other thing i know is that i want to build a business which is one is valuable to a large customer large base of customer and second thing is differentiated you know from day one you want to build a monopolistic business i don't want to say that word but you want to build that business that nobody else is building actually and that's also very valuable you know to build something that nobody else is building actually so a strategy was very simple you know whatever you do has to be applicable to a large audience for us right it has to work for us in our every market that we operate in for example and it has to fundamentally differentiate us from the competition uh on the execution side right on operation side and that's my favorite actually that's where my most mind share would go uh the thumb rule has been just set a very few goals very very few goals right i'm not a big fan of looking at those 50 matrix i want to look at like 1 2 3 4 5 you know gather the data daily and then review weekly to guide decisions so keep it very simple from a huddle to a weekly review and so on and so forth right and therefore you start building the rhythm of a huddle or a weekly review or a monthly strategy and so on and so forth right and uh, for the cash you know very simple rule don't run out of it and uh, i also try and pay attention to every large decision that might impact my future cash flow but nothing more than that actually you know and that takes the least amount of time except for the fundraise fundraise days actually when you get uh, involved with it but people part i think is such is a fundamental to every business you know the time you spend hiring the building capabilities growing your people will always uh, be a big priority uh, but today if you ask me just you know, for now i think uh, the the challenge or the most mind share would be on the execution or the operation side and uh, while on a strategy for example nothing really changes my biggest challenge would have been how do i get everybody to drive the one element of the strategy which is the most important you might have you know three or four things three or four pieces of your flywheel but which is the one you want to really feed today which is the one you really want to focus on get everybody aligned on so whether what is that one matrix you try and move in this quarter or next two quarters i think that's sort of you know what we have been trying to juggle and is, is that, that sorry, and mohit is that something that's central to all of chalo or this one key north star metric could be different for a city ops team could be different for no it's uh, so i'll first you put a north star for the chalo itself right and then you said can if everybody in chalo can move that nothing like it right you're done but if you can't for some reason then you say okay fine you know 70% of the company will still drive it what is the north star if at least the majority of the company is not really driving it you know if that's north star then everybody should be driving it actually no no fair, fair enough fair enough and uh, actually i i want to pick up a question from the audience but i'll come to it in a second because mohit you touched on something uh which i was hoping to ask all three of you and again i've seen uh, i mean uh, anshu you've through ups and downs you've uh, hired and retained some really uh, amazing team members and i'm i'm this is i'm talking beyond co-founders cos you and bridge uh, have been great and then you hired an excellent team and you've retained almost all of it uh mohit you carried a lot of uh uh fans and co-founders from carwale your successful experience before and you've also added to the team and angad the uh, your again story has been very unique and the amazing growth uh yet keeping an eye on unit economics and again on the team front i, I know it personally that you've grown uh, on that vector considerably in the last year question for all three of you is and maybe if we can reflect on it and um talk about like what how do you develop this leadership muscle how do you really develop is it about your own self leadership is it uh, like discovering that bettering it uh, or is it that plus some magic formula you have around uh, just developing the organization's leadership muscle and and put it in the context of again scale and scaling sensibly with unit economics right uh, because that's those are numbers uh, but ultimately there are people driving interesting parts of the uh, parts of the business so yeah any uh, any magic formula secret around this area would be would be good to know um uh, manish i can go first i can quickly talk about two things one on hiring and then second retaining on hiring i guess uh, the earlier you are the tougher it is but uh, uh, that's where you i think it's just got to be that whatever vision you are seeing if you can get a glimpse of that in the minds of people who you think would uh, would be really impactful to the opportunity they can see it i think that that's great and the good thing about earlier on is that the energy levels are just very high right everyone is excited um so that part that part works when you've got a new vision 
like when we were a two year old company now we're a six year old company like the, the the newness of it is actually a very big edge right you can get people on that uh, and of course you've got your story to tell like the like the the combination of all of that of course the second part um, um or let me now talk about once you're further along we are now in that phase and we're trying to get another level of, oh, sorry uh, if i get this right you're saying when, once the novelty wears off it's a hard yeah, yeah it, it's a different kind of problem what worked in that first second year right is is going to be a different set of things that you need to work at and i think at this point uh, what you've got um, um still i think the ability to say hey these are the people who've built it this is how i think then what works is having the new person meet everyone else right who's been in the system and we'll have everyone else being able to meet if they've also stayed on in the system right so retention thus becomes an important piece and there i would say not that i would say we've got that piece down uh, perfectly but what has worked in general is to make data um, uh, democratic right everyone should have access it's not that decisions are being taken from a central place right we are together sitting in a room talking about things intellectually and then taking decisions i think the second thing that work is that while all the people we are likely getting on board are ambitious when they are very capable people who are ambitious who are also being challenged and pushed i genuinely think that's the biggest driver is as long as they feel that there is more right there is more and that can continue to not just um me calling it out right but them seeing that by themselves and us working on frames where we can see okay this is the path to go i think that that creates a level of energy and drive um which which i would say gets people to stick on and when we've lost people also i would say people have contributed immensely we've usually heard that like a couple of years here felt like 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 6 7 years out which is good you know honestly i think that's a like people would say that bahut kaam karna padta that's a good thing right like we are all on that mission to say we'll we'll get this done um and people self select themselves right so and over a period uh people who have been here for a long time right they would find this zen like state right that this chaos is what is uh the value right? right being able to stay calm within that interesting and and before we move to mohit and angad there is a part of the audience question which links to this uh, it, the question is from uh, aditya tiwari that as founders have you had to like reskill yourself along the way is it needed if so how have you done it so uh, and you just answer that as well i know absolutely absolutely like con- constantly and i would say like i had been in different macro environments where i'd seen a lot but like what you need to do on your first day first week first month right like you're really like the janitor and the theo, like theo doesn't mean anything right you're really doing everything and you better do it because if you don't do it then others are not going to do it as well right and then what i i now what the answer i gave you right around building capabilities in the org that's a different answer a different skill set right where i i find unless we give it sufficient time be in absorption mode meet other founders very candidly and in a very receptive way ask that question that that teach me these things right i think that that's the way it can be learned it's just that you have to realize that you likely don't know what yeah. needs to be done and thus be open and keep revisiting and keep asking yourself that question interesting yeah. very interesting thank you for sharing that uh, uh, mohit tangad who wants to go next so uh, you know uh, on this uh, question aditya asked it's very true that uh, the the bottleneck that becomes money and also you said that is in the leadership is basically inability to grow enough leaders who can delegate and who can predict and that's when you get stuck right people who are not delegating and founders are also example of that in fact uh, to get to 10 employees founders must delegate activities in which they are weak so you want to find people who are complementary don't you look at that when you're building a you know founding team or you're building the first 10 people who are complementary who can you know not do things who can do things which you're not good at but if you want to get to 50 employees or beyond you got to delegate function which you are strong else the strength of the founder or the top leader become the weakness of the organization so while the enough is said around you know hiring and retention and people can figure out a you know who method of hiring which is a smart there's so many things right the top grading etc etc and i believe we all have learned those things uh but actually what we did right i guess was to spend a lot of time in understanding what kind of people are successful with us 
uh, today and then also in you know in the changing times maybe there are people who will be with us for two years period right and help us scale and then possibly they're not here for a longer term but can we but still have you know, i'm stopping you here but i want to i want to understand this you're saying for you maybe because you come with the the successful experience of building car wale and then you know taking it to a logical conclusion you're saying culture was the constant for you so you knew what kind of people leaders will fit or not fit in that culture is, is that's is right, that right? Or, or that's right or for the kind of business you're going to build right you want to build a very hands on business is very different you want to build a frugal business is very different right if chalo is a low margin business for example it's not but then you want to think about it very differently right versus when you think about building a in a very high large margin high margin pure software business for example so that's one to really know who will fit in here if you do not know that if you don't understand your own core value if you don't understand you know what is going to be a great fit here how do you really go you know and 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 get that guy so i think that's one very fundamental we spend a lot of time understanding that and then say okay how do we solve for this guy how do we find that uh, i lost the question actually i lost the track but i think this in uh, fact mohit if you don't if you can answer quickly before uh, angad Uh, chimes in how have you reskilled yourself like in major ways in the last let's say no forget car wale but chalo's 5 6 year journey have they how have you reskilled yeah, yourself yeah yeah a lot actually you know uh, manish i have been i come from a very very ordinary background in general and every time i had a problem i honestly have gone back and asked a lot of people for advice and i read a lot every time for example when i didn't know how to hire and i was struggling with hiring and in, how do i interview when i was I like a 24 year old founder interview head of VP marketing right with 20 years of experience for example at so I would go and read every possible book on hiring and let list the top five recommended book and say this is what really you know seems good to me and this is what is going to work and then put it to practice. I do it for almost everything. If I go to build my annual operating plan for example, I go and refresh. uh whatever people have done i go back and relook at my own mistakes and i journal some of these things i have this habit of reflecting and writing what has worked and what has not worked what mistakes we made and so on and so forth it becomes some kind of data point and so on so if you ask me the mistake you made in annual operating plan over last 15 years i can tell you so many of them which of my quarter i failed and why i failed at that right so that's one thing and the second just the sheer advice right i'll come to you and ask you for a few fundamental things and i'll go to nitin or vedehi and ask them my board members and they all very useful actually so yes if the company is growing at 30% every month you know and therefore 20 or 30x in a year isn't the founder supposed to grow at least 5x or 10x yeah, and absolutely. you know and people have built us this is nothing new that we are building right people have built and said and done all of these things like enough resources available so as long as you can stay aware about it that i had to grow myself i think it's it's easier than yeah so uh, quickly uh, manish uh, for us uh, the learning around you know building the leadership muscle uh, the biggest learning for me is uh, as much as possible solve try to solve it at the top of the funnel uh, yeah. so uh, i think hiring is probably the most value adding uh, step uh, in in the entire sort of uh, people journey i believe uh and when when we sort of uh, dwell deeper uh, we realized in fact we asked uh, people in our team that you know what what would you you know look for when you, when you are sort of joining uh, a company and it's it's actually the framework is very simple uh they want to be you know closer to the problem or they want to understand what the problem is uh they want to know who they are going to who the peers are going to be uh and third is that they want uh uh they want sort of full honesty in terms of what's expected what's the good and bad about organization i think mature uh, uh, mature people uh, mature professionals know that every organization has some goods and has some bads uh and what what we do is again very simple because ours is a very unique uh, business tier 2 tier 3 uh, it doesn't come naturally to a lot of people so we uh, we we take people for uh, visits uh to 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 places uh, where our community leaders are these are towns like rewadi sonipat uh, even the rural ones uh, and people who find a connect with the problem uh, they are like they become super excited about it uh, uh, and this is you're saying at the time of top of the funnel during the hiring process itself during the hiring process yes uh and 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 we make sure that you know everyone is uh, uh, is meeting at least uh, three people in the leadership team so they know uh what's what's the general sort of uh, who are the people that they're going to work with uh and finally you know we have a very candid chat ki yaar uh, this is what this is how we are this is what we are so self awareness is like a very big uh, yeah. you know part of the entire thing interesting have you had to uh, reskill yourself 
uh, in any major way in the last, let's say, two-year city mall journey? I think uh, multiple uh, in in multiple ways, uh, Manish. Uh, uh, starting out city mall, uh, you know, I, I was. I, I know the end result. I've seen you from pre-series A to series C. You you look like a different person every three or four months. I just don't know how you do it. Uh, I change change my haircut. <laughs> No, uh, <laughs> no, but uh, uh, so in multiple ways, you know, we uh, so for me, it's simply you know have a mindset uh, to say that hey, I am not good at uh, A B C D, uh, and go and ask people about it. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, which is like a fundamental belief that uh, you know, if you are uh, uh, if you do something multiple times, you will you will get it. Uh, so that's like in how, interesting, how guys. I and I knew this would happen where maybe like eight, nine minutes away from when I have to call this out. And uh, um, I'm seeing Q&A has lots of interesting questions. What I'll do is I'll pick a, a question and I'll direct at one of you. Um, so, and if you can just be brief in your answer, let's try and cover uh, what we can with this engaged audience. Uh, so maybe a question for you, Anshu. Uh, when we talk about unit economics, obviously there are assumptions involved, right? Could be LTV in the future or uh, contribution margin or whatever. I'm sorry, I'm adding some words to the question to make it contextual. So how, how do you like uh, uh, make sure your assumptions aren't grossly wrong? Uh, yeah, we keep comparing the data versus the assumptions. That is a simple way. I think uh, I was alluding to this earlier, like, we are saying this is a CAC, this is the retention or repeat rate, and thus this is the break even, right? Now we can do something to get the CAC down and to scale out the volume, but if the repeat crashes alongside that, the LTV question is no longer true. And it changes by, by locality and by type of business. Um, so I would say, yeah, it's that it's fairly, I think the those metrics are fairly objective to measure. As I think the mistake which we used to do, and we we are trying to change that a lot, but a lot of times these metrics become reporting metrics that end of the month, the end of the quarter, when you're putting together the invested deck, you would then look at it and say, oh, this is how it's looking. I think turning that around to say, that now we're trying to say, get to some of these on a daily basis, right? That this is how this is trending. What are the levers that we pull now to make sure that it stays on course? That, that discipline, the sooner one can bring in, the better it becomes. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, Okay, I'm trying to make sure I direct this to uh, uh, one of you. Manish, I'll make it easy for you. If you want to take yeah. up this question, how you get into the shoes of the customer, then yes, I'll take please. it up. Please, <laughs> yeah. You, you, so, you, uh, you know, uh, I built Carvale. I'm the like, very uh, best customer in Bombay. And no, no, uh, no I, I built Carvale was not taking buses, right? And I don't take buses even today, every day. And I think one of the things is to tell yourself that uh, CEO is the dumbest person in the room, right? You don't know enough because I'm not talking to my conductor every day. I'm not talking to the customer every day. I am not in the field running buses, deploying them and so on and so forth, right? And not writing a code, all of those things. So one is to literally, you know, talk to that guy as much as you can, the guy who's actually doing it. There are enough people in my city, hundreds of them, who are talking to my end customer every day. As long as I create a system, for that information to flow all the time upward, it's great. We all ensure the flow information goes downward, right? That's easy to do, you know, uh, but to make it come up all the time, you know, so your huddles, for example, every day when there's a daily huddle happening, I want to make sure that people say what insight they got from the market today, where they got stuck. I think that gets come up every day. So that's Actually, one part you do of that. It. You've been doing that for almost four, four and a half years. You're right. You, yeah, you do yeah. it. Is it a daily huddle? I didn't know. It's, that. A, it's a daily huddle with, for everybody. It's like a five minute huddle, but everybody can say, you know, what the number looks like today, what their focus is and what insight they found from a customer or they're stuck somewhere. Nobody solves it on the call, but you get that. It comes to you, right? So that's one, actually. I think the second thing is every time there's an opportunity to be in the shoes of the customer, you go and do that. If I visit my city, I make sure I take a bus. You know, uh, I just took a Bombay hop on hop up bus and we are standing to take that bus. I went and met three, three conductors that right, using my machine, for example, I went and asked five customers standing at the bus stop to say, do you use this app? Don't you use that app? And why don't you use it? And if you use it, what you like, what you don't like. And then and there itself, right? When I can, I could go to them and, you know, and speak to them. It's five minutes, but we make sure that every time there's a chance you go and do that. So two things I said, one is because you're not doing it, but somebody else is doing it in your company. You make sure that information flows to you and you believe you are the dumbest. The, uh, that guy knows more, so you value it actually. The second, every time you have a chance, 
you go ahead and do that. And again, there are customer surveys and agencies and you do all of those things, right? That's the third bucket where you say, I'll gather this information more uh, you know, methodically, systematically, and then you know, can review it more regularly. But I think I'm talking about a lot more habit or the mindset that you have for it. Very interesting. Uh, Anga, the question for you, it sort of relates to one of the Q&A here. If you had to pick that one scale vector, I mean, I'm not going to mention, uh, you know, I, all I can say is that you've scaled massively in every dimension of the business um, in, in the last two years. But if there was one scale vector you had to pick uh, that has worked well for you, what is that in your business? Well, uh, so, so the... And also, as you think about it, like, did you know this or this was like discovery as the business is, you know, just growing uh, uh, in, in every direction? Yeah, so it's, it's clearly been a, a discovery so far. So whatever I say now is like a uh, work, work in progress. Thank you for being honest. <laughs> uh, and But but it's, it's actually a function of how well you understand uh, uh, the physics of your business. I think uh, defining your scale vector is, it ultimately comes down to understanding the physics behind the business. Uh, and what we realize is uh, that the, the most leading indicator and the most important part of our business is the community leader. Uh, uh, she's the person who does you know, multiple things on the platform. Uh, so community leader for us is, is that unique entity where we realize that if we solve for uh, the velocity and quality of, uh, of getting these community leaders, uh, 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 we, we solve for 90% of the problems that exist in the business. Okay. So we just focused on that, so, you know, build, uh, creating more community leaders, creating better quality community leaders. Uh, and that's how we have sort of pinpointed and focused into that, that one North Star. And for those who don't know in the audience, that's that micro entrepreneur that you're creating. That is an important part of your uh, engagement with the consumer, right? Uh, very interesting. Yes. So uh, how do you increase that count and how do you increase the quality of that count? You also said, interesting. Uh, gentlemen, this has been fascinating. I know I can go on for like six more hours and it, I, I would still not be satisfied myself, let alone the audience. But um, let me ask you one last question, uh, which is uh, anything you want to say, uh, each one of you, uh, keeping again the context, the macro um in perspective of uh, maybe we will have a uh, one or two tough years of um around funding and um le at least funding support uh and investor support uh we don't know if it is there it's going to be a year or two two year long phenomenon but if that is a context and then thinking about scale and unit economics you got to still grow right you got to still grow your business uh what what is that one piece of advice you would give to entrepreneurs uh, anyone can go. Uh, Angad, since you have the mic, why don't you go first? Uh, so, uh, so something that we are doing and you know what, what I would say uh, really helps is uh, if, if sort of uh, funding is sort of further away, uh, you know, be super close to the customer because that is where uh, so your customer is going to guide you uh, in, in, in the right direction with whatever resources you have in terms of cash, uh, etc. Uh, so being sort of super close uh, to the uh, uh, to the end customer is, is what I would I would say just just sort of uh, triple down on on being very very close to the end customer and understand the physics of the of, of the business better because this is the time to do it. Okay, okay, especially if cash is gonna come. So what you're also implying is that if you're close to the customer, at least your revenue to cost cycle is also better. Um, right. You know until. Uh, balance sheet cash or an equity cash is available. Uh, yeah. yeah. So basically you just understand your business better and better as you understand the customer. Better. Okay. Fair enough. Fair. I know it's easier said than done because we all get busy in growing the business, but uh, very, very important piece of advice. Uh, Anshu, you want to go next? Yeah, Manish, I'd say that what I said earlier, it's a, it's a great Other than obviously to... coming up with, you, 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 you somehow cracked uh, coming up with the uh, low cost, uh, high impact, creative campaigns around your brand. And uh, I don't know how you guys come up with that, but other than that. Yeah, no, I, I was going to say that, you know, while there is this, uh, this um, uh, overcast, et cetera, that we're talking about, I, but I genuinely believe it's actually a great opportunity. Um, like use of technology is at levels like it was never. 
all sectors, all industries, there is an opportunity. And just even if I go with what Angit was saying, be close to the consumers, like, like tweak that model. And while capital is hard, Manish, I know that's the, that's the theme of the context. I think there is enough capital for people who are solving problems. There would be cap, like the capital will also get deployed and these cycles will come and go. It's a good time to stay close to the consumer and use technology, find ways through which there can be efficiency, which could be brought in, whether B2C, B2B. I think as India, we are still in a great phase while there is this, this theme of saying that capital will not be available. It's not a bad thing. Build a good business. It's a good time to do that. Interesting. Mohit, yeah. any words of it? Yeah, so, you know, it takes 10, 12 years to build a really large business, right? We all know that. So cycles come and go. Uh, you know, you may have started a time with a lot of capital available and you hit the cycle after three years. We all have seen that, actually. So I think anybody who's really building a business is committing to for 10, 12 years, you know, of their lifetime. So it's just so much more important that you solve something fundamental. You solve something which is differentiated. You solve something, you know, what your heart is really close to. So you can live with it for that long a time. And if that's what it is, I think everything else will take care of it, right? You find a great purpose, then no way you'll not find soulmates who also believe in that purpose. And would you not money fund a company which has a great purpose, got a great team in there, and you know, would you not write a check to solve the fun something which is very fundamental, actually, right? So I think it's it's very basics, right? So oh, fair, fair. And you know, so that kind of a guiding philosophy will help you ride through cycles. And you write for that kind of uh, belief, missionary founders, as we call it, you'll always find good investors. I I, I Mohit, I'd like to believe uh, we are one of them, but <laughs> <there> are, <laughs> you are, in fact. So, <laughs> it's a lot in fact, us, that's right. Yeah. Uh, gentlemen, it's been fabulous. Thank you so much for all the, uh, you know, great uh, anecdotes, advice, and sharing your experience. Uh, and, and good luck. You, you all are building fantastic businesses. Yeah. I know you know, and, for for all the founders and entrepreneurs who might be on this uh, audience, right? You should chase money and get his money, right? Oh, you will not find a more friendlier or entrepreneurial friendlier VC than him, actually. And I can vouch for it, and I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, I can second that, that for sure. Absolutely. Mohit, the check, 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 Mohit the check is on its way to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah, and when he's thank yeah. you for making us look smart. At least I can talk about that. Thank you. Three are too kind. I know that. I know that personally from my experience. Uh, um, in fact, founders do chase these guys. They're building something real, uh, something tangible, something scalable, and building it smartly. Um, thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Thank you, everyone. Thank Bye -bye. you for making it special at Revit Up.